So what I was planning to say uh, when we got cut off by the 15 minute um, video. So I'll give you a problem in MRP. The first thing that you want to do is to come up with a tree like this. Okay. And um, let me get my pen back. So after you do this tree like structure, then we will start doing the calculations. So we will look at the calculations later on. Now let's move forward. We're going to be talking about lot sizing in the MRP systems. And when we're doing the problems, you can actually see what I'm talking about. The first one is called lot for lot. This basically or L4L. That means you can buy, if I need to buy, let's say 200 widgets, I can buy all the 200 widgets. There is no constraint at all. Or you can use a formula called EOQ or the economic order quantity and you can use this. Or you can use it as a least total cost or a least unit cost. These are different types of strategies for lot sizes. Lot sizes means the part, the number of or the quantity of products or sub products that you can issue a, a planned order or a purchase order. So in the purchase order, you can buy, for instance, there are if there, if you want 400 units, you can buy all 400 units for lot for lot, or sometimes they might say you can buy only 200, so you have to buy 200 now, and then after the second week you can buy another 200, so on and so forth. So we're going to look at these kind of strategies as well in the calculations. Lot for lot is an interesting factor. It basically gets you to set up the purchase orders or planned orders to match the net requirements. Okay, and one of the things that we'll be calculating is the net requirements. So once you know the net, net requirements, then you can set up the planned, or pl planned orders or purchase orders. EOQ is done using this formula which is square root of 2 ds over h and i'm going to be talking a little more about this but just note this formula for the time being i'm going to come back and then we'll talk about what is d what is s what is h and what is eoq eoq is economic order quantity the economic order quantity is one of the easy way of buying products. So instead of if I'm so going to say, hey, I need 400 units to be bought for the next week, I can use a lot for lot, that is buy all the 400, or find out what is the economic order quantity and then buy that. Sometimes the economic order quantity might be the best way of buying rather than buying the entire amount. So we need to think about what strategy to use and we're going to be talking about which strategy and things like that later on. For the MRP, we're going to develop MRP records. And these records consist of gross requirements, scheduled receipts, projected available balance, net requirements, planned order receipts and planned order releases. The equation that you are really interested in is this, the projected available balance. You need to calculate this, and this is a very simple one. The projected available balance is the projected available balance the, for the period before minus the gross requirements of the particular period plus the scheduled receipt for the particular period plus planned order received for the particular period. 
this equation we need to know and this equation is the only equation in this chapter that you need to really understand so project the projected available balance for a particular time is equal to the projected available balance for the time before minus the gross requirements for the current time current period plus the scheduled receipts for the current period plus the planned order receipts for the current period so let's start a calculations let's look at an example so we have a company ampere incorporated they produce electric meters residential electric meters and we're going to find uh, the first the schedule and from there the MRP so this is the schedule that we are trying to figure out so you have for the month third month you have you need 1000 that is needed that is known and there is a forecast of 250 so your total production is going to be 1250 this is what you want to produce or to assemble so I'm going to look at just this for the ninth week how to do this so the ninth week has got 1250, 470, and 270. 1250 meter A's, 470 meter B's, and 270 sub assembly D's. Okay, just keep that in mind, and we are going to do the example in a minute. So, first of all, as I said in the when you're doing the MRP, the first thing, these are all given things, these are all given, so you don't need to worry about it this is what we need to come up with as i said before we have to come out with the mrp tree the tree basically has got this way there is a product a a product a has got 1d and 1c and each c has got 2d's there is a product B. The product B has got 1C and 2Ds. Okay. And this is also given to you. Item A, B, C, D. There are like A, A, B, C, D. Item A, B, C, D. Has got, these are the on-hand on hand inventory which is the beginning inventory or whatever you have on your on your inventory so for that i have 50 item a's but if i want to buy this 50 item this this sorry if i want to buy an item a then i need to have a lead time of two weeks that means if i want this a to be delivered today i have to order it two weeks prior okay to today today I have to order it two weeks prior to today so that I can get it today I also have some safety stock in this case there is no zero and I've placed some orders as well okay so this is what is called the scheduled receipts scheduled receipts is the what I have here as 10 for the week 5 so I, somebody has ordered or I have ordered on week 5, 10 of these B's will be coming, being delivered. And week 4, hundreds of D's will be coming to be delivered. And this is scheduled receipts. Okay, so this is the lead time. This is the safety stock. This is on-hand inventory. And these are the scheduled receipts. I'm going to use this and then come out with an MRP plan. Okay, that is the next.